Three sessions of Quiz the Dibs so far this summer. As we had Jim Leritz on earlier today, we're going to replay that for everybody around 525. Great conversation, especially around the art of being a catcher. Especially back in the day when catching was meant a little bit different. Manly men caught. Manly men caught. Man, ever since Johnny Bench told us about catchers, like, taking one off the foot and getting hurt, and the trainer, like, never runs out there and talks to him about it, I have noticed that more and more over the years since he said that. He's like, nobody cares if he's hurt or not. Oh, the second baseman may have fouled one off on his foot. Let's take a half hour and make sure he's okay. Oh, catcher just got trucked by the fattest dude in the ballpark. He'll be all right. So catchers is the quiz today. As we like to quiz Rob Dibble on some of his baseball knowledge, especially guys that he played with. And we, we've been working off a 1990 score box set for the last summer and a half. Uh, really just all summer long this year. And we've gotten some gems from there. Now, I did not price these cards out. However, I think there may only be a card that's worth over 75 cents. So... Somewhat of a 400-level course today. Ooh. Now, catchers, I don't know how many catchers you knew, you threw to, if any of these paths have crossed. I can honestly tell you I liked when I saw them come up to the plate because many of them couldn't hit back then. Well, they hit they a were... lot better than what they do today. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, like, today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> today, I think the catcher average hovers around 210. That's pretty good for today. Or Jose Trevino. I yeah, know. Well, I wanted to start you off with one that you knew. And, I, and you know, I always like to start the 100 level and work our way up to the 400 level in the Quiz the Dibs classroom. Uh, but I just had a Bo Diaz pop in. Oh, in my Bo I, is an amazing human. I have never read a Bo Diaz card. Uh, do you know his number? Do you remember what number he was? He eight. Mm, very close. But you are incorrect. It is a single digit, though. Maybe it, you... It Two? Thought, no. You probably thought it was... been five, because that was retired no. by the Reds. Number six. Number six. Probably squint in your eyes. <laughs> now, Bo, what do you know about his 89 year? Because this is 1990, and we've been watching some... Uh, Craig- I know I never talked to the, the press. He would not talk to the media. Couldn't speak English, though, right? No, he spoke perfect English. Who am I thinking of? Oh, Perez. Doggy didn't. No, Doggy spoke broken English. <laughs> <laughs> but he's Cuban. So Bo Diaz never Puerto talked Rico, to the So, yeah, he had some broken English. But Bo Diaz never talked to the media. Would huh? not. Would not. He'd, he'd walk. They'd come to his locker. He'd walk into the training room. Now, we've been watching a lot of old Yankees footage on Yes this afternoon, and you've just been talking about, and I totally agree, like 1980s, 90s ball players look like Dads, they all looked Look like coaches. Fifty <clears throat> today's to coaches, forty-five, fifty years old. Right, Bo Diaz looks like he has been retired out of the game of baseball for ten years. Yeah. But no, this is just his one of his final seasons. Eighty-nine, I guess he had some knee situations. That's he what's did. on the back of the and, card. And he was awesome. He had some great years. Indians and Phillies had to be like he a dad in the, the dugout, end. man. Yeah, but when you caught when you catch between a thousand and fifteen hundred games, that's when it's usually. By time for catchers back then. You know, a guy like Bob Boone caught over 2,000 games. I think Carlton Fisk caught, caught over 2,000 games. Mm-hmm. There's very rare guys that t- that got over 2,000 games. Yadi Molina was one of them. But once you get to about 1,250 games, the knees are pretty much shot. Here, Bob, but help like out. Bob. Show, show this camera this Bo Diaz card. No, the other one. Let the people see. So I'll give Bo you a great Diaz. Bo Diaz. Bo Diaz, when he, I came up in 88, and if he wasn't able to throw the runner out at second, he would run out, like sprint to the mound, grab you by the shirt, and be like, come on, man, you got to pick me up. <laughs> That's my fault. So he, and listen, there were years when guys were 25 for 25 stealing bases on me. I had a high leg kick. I was not going to, you know, right, right. quick, quick kick to home and slide step, all that kind of crap. I thought that was nonsense. I always did. And so even even Lou or whoever was like, uh, or Pete, you know, hey, you know, give me a slide step right here. I'd be okay. And I'd still have a high leg kick. <laughs> But right. He would come out and he would be like, "You got to pick me up right there because I screwed it up." I wanted to get the juices flowing. So, so Carl Diaz. Fisk, twenty two hundred games. Bob Boone, twenty two hundred games. Yachty, twenty one hundred. Gary Carter, two thousand fifty six, and Jason Kendall, 
Those are the only catchers to ever catch over 2,000 games. All right, that uh, brings me Thank to you, this 1990 scorecard of this. Pudge Rodriguez, how many did Pudge have? God, 24-27. I wonder what his knees feel like today. So the first test of the Quiz the Dibs Catcher Edition is a New York Met. Um, and this was, you know, one of his last seasons. I don't know why the Expos keep giving up great players. Gary Carter. Bing. Give Hall him a famer. Give him the a late Gary Carter. Hall of Famer. The kid. The kid. First of all, I love the kid. The kid. He was in the league for like 20 years before you got there. Dude, look at that face, though. He yeah. always looked like a kid. I actually noticed and that today because I was like, gosh, so this handsome. is 89. He's already been in the league forever. Like, this can't be a current picture at the time. Like, it can't be 1989. No, and, be even, like and even after that, he was with the Dodgers after that. And so the thing about Gary Carter we used to laugh about, he always would make a great play and be, like, right on camera. Like, he always, he, <laughs> there, he never missed being on camera. So, yeah. The Here, Bob, was give, great. give people a game. All right, Gary Carter. That was an easy one. We're getting we're getting a little tougher, a little tougher. Now this guy wasn't even considered to be one of the greats until probably this season. Uh, Philadelphia Philly catcher Darren Dalton, ninety three. Him a ding. What a picture too on the back. Dutch, by the way, married uh, a Hooters girl. And used to take a lot of crap because in Clearwater, she was the original one. And so you would see her picture at center field when we'd go to Clearwater to play the Phillies. And they would, and we, and so we had a big thing with the Tigers, the Phillies, um, the Mets in spring training. We would all meet at Hooters in Bradenton. And he would take so much crap because his wife was like the original Hooters girl. And her picture was always on the billboards and stuff like that. Okay, so we've mentioned this team already, but let's go to L.A. and talk Dodgers catchers. Mike Sosha. You're not making this hard. This is too easy. At this time, he had already been a Dodger catcher for a decade. Greatest video you're ever going to see is my roommate, Norm Charlton. His hair was really black back Taking then. Mike Sosha out at the plate. <laughs> they played at the Hall of Fame, at the Reds Hall of Fame. They played it, you know, whenever we're together. But so Mike Sosha was stealing signs. He was relaying them from second base. Went up to the plate. Norm threw at him four times and missed him, which really made Norm irate. Then he told the reporters that he was trying to do it intentionally. Got a week suspension. Ah! One week, seven days. Um, so the first time he was able to try to take Mike Sosha out, Norm's on first, runs through Sammy Perlazzo, the third base coach's stop oh, sign, God. and he trucks over Mike Sosha. Both of them were hurt, but I think Norm was a little bit more proud of what he did because it was one of the greatest takeouts ever. Okay, so you know that Dodgers catcher. Do you know one of the backup Dodger catchers that was backing up Sosha at the time? This gentleman had to have been 40 to 41 years old during this. uh, Rick Dempsey? Wow, that's some good What Knocks on the Rick Dempsey. I love Rick Dempsey, man. He was an Orioles catcher forever. And he is one of the coolest cats. I was at a autograph show with the Nasty Boys last year. No idea. In Westchester, New York. And first guy I saw when I walked in was Rick Dempsey. Really? He is the nicest person. He used to do a lot of weird stuff during rain delays, right? He did. He would dress up. He would dress up like Tommy Lasorda, put a pillow in his gut and run around and stuff. And, you know, goof. Catchers are usually goofy. They're real. They're like psychiatrists. They have to talk us off the ledge all the time, pitchers. So they're your best friends. Wow. He was okay. Thurman Munson's backup? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's how Bob I'm Joyce good. knows all. We got to have Bob on more. Dempsey has Talks been history around. with Bob Joyce. And that's the other thing for catchers, man. Like, you know, there's usually not necessarily journeymen more these days than ever, but they've just been around. They're just like. Like sage, their their w- wisdom is. But like I told you about Buck Martinez, Buck was a backup for 17 years in the right. big leagues. I would have loved that job. And probably 17 hanging with years? the coaches more than he's hanging with. And the that's players. why. And he was a he was a manager. Yeah. Now he's been a broadcaster with the Blue Jays for 20 years. They're so knowledgeable. This backup was backing up Darren Dalton back for the Phillies. This is the 400 uh. level catcher right here. Now, in 19... 19- was it Pratt? Todd Pratt? He was a Cub. 
back in the mid '80s. Then he switched over Jody to Jody Davis. Mm. Wish I had that card. Damn. Then he went to the Cardinals. Then he became a Philly. Uh, decent hitter, man. He was always above like 250, but he had a bad career average because he was a Cub for a while. They're not that good. So he was a backup catcher. Had to have been. I have no idea. Steve Lake. Yeah, that's Steve doesn't Lake. Ring wow, a bell. the ring only a bell. one, and that was the tough one of the day. Steve well, Lake he gave me a backup guy. That... Uh, I had the backup oh, Dodger yes, for Dempsey. Yeah. I knew you'd knew th- know that one. I figured all of them were easy to yeah. day. I thought Steve Lake would have been that gem. Oh, you tricked me. We have to figure out you who this me. guy is. Steve he, Lake. He, he gave me just Steve Lake there at the end. Steve Lake at the end. Gotcha. Not like you know. What was it? Benedict was the catcher, the backup uh, in Atlanta. There's, God, I knew all those guys. Here's the thing. The Phillies weren't in our division. Oh, it's, that's right. The Phillies yeah, were not in our division. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our division back then, think about how crazy this was. But you guys nonsense. played. I mean. Eh, we'd only play them six times a year. Um, so it, it, the Dodgers, Padres, Giants, Astros, and Braves were in our division. How insane was that? You come into the big leagues, you're like, oh, you know, I'll probably be playing the Cubs all the time and the Cardinals all the time and the Pirates all the time. Pirates was our shortest flight. It's like 20 minutes. We're up and we're down. Nope, not in your division. So now they are, but back then they weren't. Stephen Lake, uh, 1983 to 1993. Ricky's brother. Ricky Lake. No, it is not. It's a good one. Uh, Lake started game seven. Was it Steve Trout was the pitcher? So you could have Lake Trout? Oh, that would have been something. That would have been Trout something. Trout throwing to Lake? Lake started game seven in the 87 World Series for the Cardinals. He went one for three with an RBI single. Over his career, he threw out 45% of that base That is runners. awesome. That's why he stayed around. That guy was a great defensive catcher. Uh, that's ninth all time. That's amazing. 45% is amazing. I think Yachty's only like 41% for his career. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Steve Pudge Lake. Rodriguez is probably right up there 45%. I mean, that's that's throwing some people Do out. not run on Steve Lake. No. That, that guy must have had a cannon. He's still with us. 67 is probably out nice. in California. That's where he's from. Let's try to dig up Steve Lake. I like to talk to Steve. I always I'll like finding the ones somebody. you don't know and then try to twist and turn well, seven degrees now to I, now, Kevin now Bacon. Now i got to find out, you know, like because it, it's hard. Because some of these guys, first of all, they don't want to come on. Second of all, like, but the guy, you know, uh, who's getting a lot of play right now doing the Phillies games is John Cruck. John Cruck, I was listening to this. <laughs> I love John Cruck. John Cruck says some of the most ridiculous things, not that we don't. But he was, <laughs> during like a, a lull, he's like, why aren't babies born with chest hair? He was. He goes, is, is, are like the hair follicles, like, exactly. Are the hair follicles dormant until you're like 15? And so he just goes on and on and on. And even, and, and his partners don't know what to say. Great question. Oh, yeah, because he's such a goofball. <laughs> but he's from West Virginia. The one, my favorite thing about John Cruck is every time you'd go to Philly, he would come over with a couple of uh, jars of moonshine. Acting, acting like it wouldn't blind you by just taking a sip of it, and it would. And those guys in the this is why the Phillies were so wild. That's all they drank. They were that the, Dalton, Danny Jackson, Croc Dykstra, that uh, Dave Hollins. Honestly, that that if if they were born a hundred years earlier, um, they would have been r- robbing trains and stagecoaches. Absolute monsters. Every last one of them. Their their whole team was crazy. Well, John Crux, West Virginia. Yeah. That explains it. Yeah, West yeah. Virginia. Um, but, I mean, they, they were all nuts. They were all nuts. And, they, and you know what's sad? Look this up. Um, because of the turf, whatever they had. Um, have you ever heard of for, Forever Chemicals? Forever Chemicals stay in your system. They never leave. They've had, like, eight guys off that 93 team die of brain cancer. Interesting. Yes. Very interesting. Yes. And then Tug Tug uh, Tug Mc... Tug McGraw. Tug McGraw. He yeah. died of brain cancer, yep. and he pitched on that that field too before that. Wow. So like from the eighties to nineties, that veteran stadium, 
that turf had a lot of forever, forever chemicals uh, in it, you and a lot on, of dudes died of cancer. You might be onto something there. Yeah, you, know. yeah, you might be onto something. I was I'm, just watching that on some some uh, doctor channel. Yeah, whatever. looking it up right now. Phillies that uh, were in kind of that era. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back and do dibbles and bits while you're thinking about that in the yeah. break. We'll be right back.